at the time of Oroville Dam's construction, a glory hole was constructed for the dam, which was never operational. Whoever constructed Oroville Dam, whether it was a contractor or a government agency, needs to be investigated. So this is highly criminal what was done here at Oroville. This dam was designed to fail. It was totally meant to collapse eventually. So y'all need to ask yourselves who built the rest of these dams and levee systems. The same people that built this fail in Orville Dam. The wet weather was also credited with this rare site about 60 miles north of San Francisco. Lake Berryessa is filled beyond capacity. So a huge amount of water is literally flowing down the drain. Maria Villarreal shows us the phenomenon that hasn't been seen in more than a decade. First the rain, now the drain. California's wet winter has pushed Lake Berryessa way beyond capacity, pouring water into its bathtub-like drain. It's the first time that's happened in 11 years. Back in October, we were essentially half full. This is the first time that the lake has been so low and filled up and spilled in one year. What looks calm at the top of the Morning Glory Spillway, as it's called, looks like a raging torrent at the bottom. The spillway is located 200 feet from the Monticello Dam. It's shaped like a funnel, 72 feet wide at its lip and narrowing to 28 feet at an outlet down at the Puta Creek. When water in the lake rises to more than 440 feet above sea level, it spills over the lip of this funnel and pours into the creek 700 feet below. When this reservoir reaches its capacity, this spillway can take in about 48,000 cubic feet of water per second. That's the equivalent to draining half an Olympic-sized pool in just one second. This is what the drain has looked like during California's drought so dry that it became an unofficial skateboard park. The water started trickling in on Friday. Now it's become a bit of a tourist destination. You might say a holy pilgrimage. Okay. See this? This is really something. That's pretty awesome how that's going down like that. The spillway could keep flowing for the next couple of months. For CBS This Morning, Mireya Villarreal, Lake Berryessa, California. Let's take a look at the construction of the Oroville Dam, that mighty engineer and marvel that it is, or was, or never was. Here in Northern California, hunk of junk like the on rest the western of them. slope of the Sierra Nevada flow the clear, sparkling waters of the Feather River, a river once prized for its gold, a river once feared for its floods. Today, the floodwaters of the Feather River have been tamed and stored here in the foothills as the primary water storage facility for the California State Water Project. This has been made possible by an outstanding engineering achievement, Oroville Dam. At the dam site, we're... Yeah, here's one of those mighty diversion tunnels that would really be nice to have right now now wouldn't it began on the first of two tunnels which would divert the river during dam construction part of the river channel was closed off this allowed crews to expose the bedrock on which the dam's concrete core block would be built in 1963 the placing of earth fill material began the contractor, Oro Dam Constructors, modified an abandoned railroad to move the earth fill material 12 miles from a gold dredge tailing area to the dam site. A huge bucket wheel excavator scooped up rock and gravel at the rate of more than 3,500 cubic yards per hour. The material was sent on conveyor belts to the train loading area. After it was screened, the material was sent by conveyor belt to train loading hoppers. By filling 10 cars at one time, an entire 40 car train was loaded in less than 15 minutes. Three sets of locomotives continually shuttled the cars between the dam and the boro site.
At the unloading area, the cars were dumped automatically without needing to be uncoupled. The material again rode the conveyors. The impervious clay going right to the dam. And the coarser material going to a mixing and temporary stockpiling area. Each type of material went to its own specific part of the dam, where it was dumped, spread, and packed down. Inspectors monitored the operation constantly to maintain quality control. In 1964, the second diversion tunnel was completed. By the end of the year, the construction of the upstream portion of the dam rose to 425 feet. In December of 1964, a record flood roared down the forks of the Feather River. But Oroville Dam was ready. And although only partially finished, it controlled the flood, saving downstream farms and cities millions of dollars in damage and possible loss of life. Meanwhile, deep within the left abutment of the dam, the powerhouse was being carved out of solid rock. Up top, construction continued around the clock to build Oroville Dam. Day by day, week by week, the dam grew. When completed, it would stand 770 feet high. It would be 6,900 feet long, 3,500 feet thick at the base, and contain 80 million cubic yards of earth material. In 1967, the final load of earth was put in place. The last diversion tunnel was closed, and Lake Oroville began to fill with water, one year ahead of schedule. Oroville Dam's powerhouse, later to become the Edward Hyatt Power Plant, was also nearing completion. It had been almost seven years since ground was broken to begin construction, and it was time to celebrate again. On May 4, 1968, Oroville Dam was formally dedicated by Governor Ronald Reagan. Here before you is Lake Oroville, filling to its destiny for the use of flood control, hydroelectric power, irrigation, municipal and domestic purposes, and as one of the greatest recreational and fishery lakes in California. And off there, is the highest dam in the United States. This is a major achievement of our time, and it's with great pride, therefore, that I simply dedicate Oroville Dam and Lake Oroville to the people of California's future who will benefit from this giant structure and the water that it impounds. Thank you very much.